This is key. Basically, the entire library available on Meta's Horizon platform will be easily and quickly ported into Android XR. Back in 2013, a video took the internet by storm. What does the fuck say? No, not that one. It was a trailer for a new tech product, Google Glass. From YouTube videos to 9Gag comments, the internet couldn't stop talking about this revolutionary new product. A pair of glasses that would allow you to walk around and interact with maps, get notifications, and even shoot video through just a pair of sleek and relatively fashionable glasses. In 2013, the hype was real. However, it was short-lived. With a battery of just 30 minutes and not a lot of software support, Google Glass was a complete commercial flop. Remember, this was four full years before even the Oculus Rift hit the market. It also didn't help that the price was $1,500 back in 2013, which, counting for inflation, is about a billion dollars today. Probably. Now, Google thinks it's time for a comeback. Instead of a big launch aimed at hyping up the products with flashy videos, Google announced Android XR almost intentionally under the radar. Seriously, they didn't even post the official keynote video on their YouTube channel. But don't be mistaken, Android XR could be a game changer for the industry. And today, I will try and go through the reasons why I'm optimistic about the impact Android XR could have on the industry. Before Google kills it off, of course. Oh my god! They killed Android XR. You bastard! So, on the back of this week's news of Google acquiring HTC's engineering division, I thought it would be a great time to dive in and take a look at what Android XR is, what it offers, and why it could change the AR and VR industry altogether. The first thing to understand is that Android XR is so much more than a single device. Well, it's an operating system, a platform on which hardware manufacturers can make, well, hardware. In fact, they have already partnered with Samsung, Qualcomm, and Xreal, and the first Android XR devices will be hitting the market in 2025. The most anticipated of these is Samsung's AR VR headset, codenamed Project Muhan, which is expected to be announced within the next few months and could potentially hit the market by the end of the year. One of the biggest selling points for Android XR is the easy integration with the Android Play Store and various Google apps. Apple pioneered this approach with the Apple Vision Pro where it allows Vision Pro users to easily use any app available on the App Store inside of their Vision Pro headset. It's too bad that these are the only apps available on that headset due to their awful developer support. In fact, it was confirmed by Meta CTO Andrew Bosworth uh, that Meta repeatedly asked Google to allow Meta to integrate the Play Store on Android similar to how Apple did it, but all of their attempts were refused. Well, now we know why they were refused. Google wanted it all for themselves. Apart from Play Store integration, Android XR has one big benefit with using some popular Google products. Apps such as Google Maps and Google Earth could be easy wins for Google. In fact, we're already seeing Google Play this card. With Google Earth, for example, or Google Maps playing a heavy role in the promotional material. From the demo videos, the integration of Maps seems actually quite impressive. Being able to seamlessly overlay AR elements onto the real world and show directions could be a game changer in the AR and VR space. This will be incredibly cool to use when small form AR glasses hit the market. And in case you're wondering, yes, they are very much planned. In fact, a large part of the presentation was dedicated to small form AR glasses. It really was a nostalgic moment, and it feels like we're getting the Google glasses we were waiting for in a, in a year or two. This is further strengthened by their partnership with Xreal, who are one of the manufacturers of small form AR glasses on the market. And these are quite rare. Uh, apart from Xreal, only a couple of other manufacturers even produce these glasses. 
Both companies have confirmed that Xreal will release a small form AR glasses similar to Google Glass on the Android XR platform. The other big element of the presentation was their focus on AI. Personally, I am very tired of companies just squeezing AI into absolutely everything just to get a pat on the head by their shareholders. But in this case, it does seem like they implemented AI quite nicely. Google has big plans for the integration of their Gemini AI into the broader Android XR ecosystem. Uh, during their demo, they showcased quite a lot of different ways in which you could navigate through the menus and operate the headset. For me, one of the biggest problems that VR has right now is just how clunky it is to write text and in general how clunky it can be to navigate some of the menus. So having an option to control your headset with just your voice seems quite interesting. Alexa, how many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Three equally distributed teaspoons. Alexa, put on my Saturday playlist. But with AI assistance not getting that much adoption so far, I will let it rest until I get an actual sense of how users are using it and if they are using the feature. But this is not just an Alexa ripoff. To be fair, Google showed some quite impressive AI features in their demo. For example, you could translate live speech from different languages in real time. Uh, also, the assistant could bring you to any location in the world, basically, by just using Google Street View, and it does seem like they've worked on that bit quite a lot. I am under the English Channel. I am still in the Arctic. I'm in Gibraltar. I'm on Marlebone Road. I'm on top of a hill. I'm on 50th Street. I am squinting into the sun. It will be interesting to see how much usage these AI features actually get, but it is for sure an interesting experiment, and. If successful, it could completely redefine the user experience and the way we use VR headsets, which is quite interesting to me and I think quite good for the technology as a whole, because if Google fails, at least the industry has learned something. Now that we've taken a look at what Android XR is, we will take a look at what this means for the broader AR VR industry. But first, it's ad time. This video is sponsored by Hunt the free browser extension that gives you really bad deals and allegedly scams pretty much everyone involved in the process. Just kidding, we won't be advertising Honey on this channel because they didn't pay us. If they did, as a responsible and morally righteous company, we probably would have. However, we will sponsor it ourselves, like we do every video, at time. At TAR, we have created some of the best AR, VR, and metaverse experiences. We've worked with major brands such as Ford, Microsoft, Best Buy, and many, many more to bring immersive experiences to more and more people. And for this, we've been recognized by a whole boatload of awards and accolades, from Clutch Awards to the nominations by the prestigious AIXR Awards. What makes us unique is that we use a combination of consulting and development, we know that navigating the immersive space can be hard for companies. This is why we are committed to providing our clients with a full white glove experience, where we lead them through the entire development process. For more information, reach out to us on our website. Let's be honest, the last two years were tough on the VR industry. Ever since Meta ruined the idea of the metaverse with their marketing communications being worse than Elon Musk's gameplay, most regular users took a step back from VR and just waited for the technology to get a bit better. Apple also didn't help with releasing a half-baked device with a price tag that costs exactly one kidney and has zero apps. Why doesn't it have any apps? Well, as someone who wanted to release an Apple Vision Pro app badly, I can confirm that their developer support seems like it's run by small children who really like money. This left only enthusiasts like me who really love the technology as the only demographic actually using VR headsets. But ever since, Meta's been kind of on a redemption arc, and the release of the Quest 3S finally sparked a surge of VR usage again. In fact, December 2024 has seen the second highest percentage of VR usage on Steam ever. If we take into account the fact that the Steam user base has grown since the last peak in 2022, and that a lot more people are using just to use the MetaQuest platform, 
we can easily say that right now, there are more VR users live than there have ever been before. The trend now is clear. VR is growing again. And it's all thanks to Meta, the absolute king in the industry. Apple tried to compete and failed. Now, the question is, why do I think Google and Android will succeed where Apple failed? The answer to this question is complex, and we need to take a look at a lot of reasons. But the main reason why I think the Apple Vision Pro flopped is the actual lack of VR apps on the device. Although you can see phone and tablet apps on the Vision Pro, they are not real AR and VR apps. They're something you can just use on your phone, which most people do. On the other hand, Meta has a flourishing ecosystem of games and apps. And as their user base is growing, developers are giving more and more attention to this space. Some smooth-brained individuals in the audience might be asking, but Mario, isn't Meta's Horizon operating system just a reskin of Android? To those people, I would answer yes. And it's exactly the reason why I think Android XR has a big chance of changing the industry. You see, Apple's big brain decision of having a walled garden cost them the potential of having thousands of VR apps that are thriving on Meta's Horizon platform simply ported to the Apple Vision Pro. I can say with a high level of certainty that Android XR won't have that problem. Why? It's simple. Every app ever created for any Meta Quest headset is an Android app, which makes porting it very, very easy. It means that all of these apps that are on the Meta Store could, within a matter of days, just be running on Android XR. This is key. Basically, the entire library available on Meta's Horizon platform will be easily and quickly ported into Android XR, as most developers, including us, will take the why not approach. It's just so simple to port Android apps that already exist on Meta's Quest headsets into Android XR and get a wider audience and wider reach. Apart from some Meta-owned games and apps like Beat Saber or Asgard's Wrath, anything not directly owned by Meta will be ported to Android XR. Add to that the marketing budgets that companies like Samsung will spend to promote their headsets, and you have some very strong competition coming Meta's way in the coming years. The winners will ultimately be the consumers. We can expect higher quality headsets and competitive prices as these two platforms will be battling it out for dominance. And Apple, if they get their shit together. For now, it all seems ideal for Android XR. However, no success is guaranteed. And Android XR has some real risks that they need to deal with. For starters, we need to consider that Meta has spent years building their Horizon OS. And although it's based on Android, it's so well polished and probably miles ahead in some aspects. It will take Android years to catch up just with the user experience. This is probably one of the main reasons why they are flipping the script and going with a full AI user interface change, trying to disrupt the way users interact with these headsets because they know that if they would directly compare with Meta in the traditional way that VR UI is used, they will probably lose just because how polished Meta's Horizon platform is. Another reason why I believe Android XR might fail is because I believe that Google personally hates me. Let me explain. Every time I get really excited about a Google product, such as Google Stadia, and as soon as I start using it, I use it for like a week and I'm really happy. And then Google receives some kind of a mysterious bat signal that, you know, in my head, there's actual happy hormones coming in. and. With that, they decide to shut the entire thing down immediately. So I think that might happen if I in any way start enjoying Android XR. Oh my god, they killed Android XR. You bastard! I promise I won't get too excited about Android XR, just to make sure they don't shut it down. But jokes aside, if the VR market has shown us something so far, it's that you really need patience for the ecosystem the community and the entire user base to grow. If Google replicates the approach they had with Google Stadia or their failed social media network, Google+, they will almost certainly fail in this market too. But it seems like they're taking it very seriously so far. 
Just last week, Google acquired HTC's engineering division. HTC, as many VR fans know, creates really good hardware and VR peripherals. It's unclear exactly what the newly acquired engineers will do, but if I had to guess, the communication between the operating system, aka Android XR, and the actual hardware would be my best guess. The final thing that might hinder the success of Android XR is their big bet on AI. I agree with Google that AI will most likely play a major role in the AR VR ecosystem in the future. However, I am afraid that Google might just push these AI interactions too far, even in places where it's completely unnecessary. We've seen this trend now with both tech and non-tech companies shoving AI into absolutely everything for no particular reason and without any regard of the user experience. This AI integration will either be a big hit and completely change the way AR VR headsets are used, or it will be a complete flop and it will make Google kill Android before it even reaches its potential. Oh my God, they've killed Android XR. You bastards! Now, putting things into perspective, honestly, I'm more of a fan of what Google is doing with Android XR, and I think there are many more positives than there are negatives. Quite honestly, the biggest negative for me and the biggest risk and worry is just if Google just decides to prematurely kill it. I think given enough time, Android XR, for the reasons mentioned in this video, will be one of the most important players in the industry, if not the most important. I think the battle with the Meta Horizon ecosystem and hopefully Apple getting their shit together might make 2025 one of the most exciting years in VR. So in that case, keep following us as we will be making videos on exactly that topic. To do that, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on a bunch of social media and pretty much just write me a letter by post. You just need to figure out where I live, which I won't tell you. Goodbye. Oh, the cube was missing the entire time. Well, at least the cat's there.